At this point, we've worked on two separate applications. The first one showed a single window to the user, and the second one showed two separate windows, and we put together some level of communication between those two separate windows. We're now going to start working on our third application, and this one's going to throw a little bit of a twist in here. So we're definitely going to be amping up the difficulty a little bit with this section, but we're going to learn a whole lot as we go through it. So let's talk a little bit about the application that we're going to build. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you about this application is that it's going to look slightly different depending on whether you are on Windows or on OS X. So we're really going to have to address some cross-platform issues with this application. The application that we're going to be building is going to be based on the tray, or the application tray, or the system tray of the operating system. So we'll show an icon down here next to the clock on Windows. When a user clicks on this icon, we'll pop open a window. This window is intended to be a sort of task management or timer sort of application. So we'll show a big timer to the user. It'll say, hey, here's how long you have to complete this current task. And the user will have the ability to actually pause the task as well. On OS X, the application is going to look awfully similar, but the location in which this little window is going to open up is going to be dramatically different. So because OS X has the taskbar on the very top of the screen, and the tray on the top right will show an icon up here. And when the user clicks on that icon, then we'll open up the window up on the top right hand side of the screen. Now, this application we're going to work on is going to work a little bit differently, especially in exactly how we put it together. So let me tell you a little bit about what I mean by that. This time around, the application that's going to show up inside of this window right here, like the actual HTML and JavaScript that is rendering the usable uh, user application or the UI to the user has already been put together for us. So I already took the liberty of putting together the entire timer application that's going to sit in here. I did this because, again, I want to focus a lot on the Electron side of things and not quite so much the more mundane React or JavaScript side of things for the actual UI. Now, of course, you can read through all the React code because I did use React to build this application. So if you want to get a really good idea of exactly how the timer works, you can certainly dive into the code around there. And we're going to have a couple of tasks that we have to take care of inside the React side of this application as well. So we'll definitely be able to dive into that code a little bit. But again, I just want you to know that the project we're going to be working on here, some of the code will be already written. And it's really going to be up to us to take that existing application and wrap it all up inside of an Electron app. So it will be a pretty good learning experience. Okay, so in this section, I want to close out by installing the boilerplate or the kind of starter code that includes this application or the actual timer logic and everything having to do with that. So to do so, we'll open up our web browser. Let me get a window here. There we go. And we're going to go over to github.com and clone an existing repository that contains the code for this particular example. I'm going to navigate to github.com slash my name, which is Steven Greider, slash electron code, like so. Now, once you're here, you can clone this repository by either cloning it with Git or by downloading it as a zip file. So if you're not familiar with Git, hey, no problem. Just download it as a zip file and then extract it to anywhere on your desktop and you'll be good to go. Now I'm a little bit more familiar with Git, so I'm just going to go ahead and clone it by copying the link right here. I'll then go over to my terminal. I'm going to make sure that I'm not inside of any of my existing project directories. So here's the two other applications we've worked with at this point. So notice that I'm not inside of that to-dos to directory at this point. I'm outside of it. And out here, I'll clone the project. Oops, I dropped off the link. There we go. Once I've cloned the project, I'll then change into that project directory. Inside of here, you'll notice a folder called boilerplates. That's what we want to find. So I'll change into that directory. And then inside of here, I'm going to find the tasky directory. That's the application that we're going to be working on. We're going to work on the other project, which is called convert, in the next application that we work on. So for right now, you can just leave that folder as it is. So I'll change into tasky. There we go. Okay, so last thing we're going to do here is install some dependencies inside this project. 
by running npm install. Now it's going to take just a moment or two to run, so let's take a quick pause and we'll come back in the next section and start exploring some of the code that was included inside of this boilerplate package. So I'll see you in just a second.